elegant, modern, and comfortable. We actually bought this house. It was a 1930s old, like old house that needed a lot of work and we didn't know how much work it needed. So like a lot of reno stories go, it was stripping back the walls and it was very, very surprising. And at the end of the day, it ended up being a, a total gut job. And then we decided that once we're doing that, we might as well blow off the back of the house and create this addition, which is what we did. So you have the 1930s house in the front of the house and then you have the modern space in the back. It was, a, it was a lot of work. More work than we signed up for. I do love this room. It's just the space where everyone congregates together. After a day at school or at work, we are always here in the kitchen or in the family room or at this table. My husband and I both thought, we don't want to be in separate rooms. We want to be in a big room where the whole family can be at the same time because we still like each other. <laughs> We did want each room to sort of feel like its own space, so, you know, the mud room has a real cool ethnic vibe to it, and the dining room is fully contemporary with a big round white table, but the living room is a beautiful dark blue and with a dark ebonized wood floor, so each room has its own personality. My husband and I both have very contemporary taste, but we also like a lot of older mid-century modern furniture and we drew inspiration, I guess, from our travels, from the artwork which we collect and the furniture we collect. My husband actually collects radios, Bakelite radios, Catalan radios from the 30s, which are just wonderful color and shape. So integrated with objects that I've collected, they sort of give a personality to the space more than anything. The artwork that I had in my former home, because the rooms were smaller, it was more conducive to doing groupings of smaller works and moving those smaller works into this home with the big expanses of space became a bit of a quandary because it was one of those things where groupings looked diminutive on the big walls. Somehow in my brain thought, I'd rather give a lot of negative space around these pieces of art so they can each have their own presence and just have their own space to breathe. And as a result, putting the art in new context changes the art completely. I will buy art just based on my loving the piece. I do like the idea of putting a piece of art in each room, and I think everyone can benefit from that. It definitely opens up walls for an otherwise very flat space. It can draw you in to the space very well. It can give you a smile in the morning. My husband collected furniture before we got married. He had that as his collection, and he's kind of leaned a little towards my taste, and I've leaned a little towards his taste in furniture, so we've kind of met in the middle. My husband and I both like to have little bits of little things that are just for us or for other people when they come in. I have wine glasses on the ceiling of my dining room. <laughs> I find that people do like to decorate with their art and I personally don't like to decorate with my art. I like to just like my art and find a great spot for it where I'm going to enjoy it. I don't think there's a problem with putting a bright green chair in front of a piece that might not work with it at all. I quite like that juxtaposition. It shows an eclectic taste. It shows boldness and that's what design I think should be about.